All right, you ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, actually, and welcome to the Ministry Media Show. Uh, also broadcasting on Mondays at 12 p.m. on Rainbow Gospel Radio. Oh, we're amazed to have you and very honored to have you. And I am honored and excited to be speaking today with Shal uh, Marie. Shal, thank you so much for joining me on this broadcast. I'm excited to talk to you. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Thank you. And thank you for having me. I'm a bit nervous, but so excited. I think you'll be fine. Um, so just for the, the reason I... Um, the reason I approached Shell is because I saw her doing some videos. Now, um, what you might not know, and uh, if you're listening here, we are both presenters on Rainbow Gospel Radio. Correct, Shell? Yes. All right. So she has a show and I have a show. And I have a show where I interview people <laughs> around media. So I thought this would be pretty cool. <laughs> so um, I saw on the Rainbow Chat group, I saw some videos that Shal has done. And uh, I thought, this is very interesting. I love this. And I started looking through her profile, not stalking. <laughs> and uh, I just, I was very interested to see some of the things that she was doing. And Shal, that's, that's uh, what I want to talk to you about today. Um, so there's a couple of things that you are involved in. Let's first start with, um, Tell us your tell us your story, your your redemption story. How did you meet Christ, and um, what what happened? How long ago was that? What happened, etc. Okay, um, about two years ago, I was like everyone else, um, in a very dark um, space, you know, and I just walked this one day in into church and. Um, the, the pastor's wife is the one that's greeting everyone at the door and, you know, um, welcoming everyone. And she just took me and t t um, told me that she was also struggling uh, with things that I'm struggling. And I'm like, what? And just there, I was like, this must be a sign. And from that day, um, I was... Uh, every Sunday, every one Wednesday in church, and this where, where everything started. And um, about in the lock time, I, I'm a person that doesn't like the, the own vo um, noise of my voice. Now, I don't like my own voice. I don't listen to a, a voice note twice. Um, and uh, about a year ago, that um, two times uh, who phoned me and asked me to... Uh, run a show on Rainbow Gospel Radio, and God yeah. told me no. Right. And just one day, about, I think it's two months ago now, just my pastor phoned me the Monday and told me, you're next week on Rainbow Gospel Radio with your own show. And I was like, what? A dream come true, because it's all I want to do. I just want to get the, the word of God out there and tell everybody about uh, Jesus, I'm like that song of Casting Crowns, and nobody just wanted to show everybody the one who saved my soul. Mm. And in the lockdown, um, the plan was to, to get the people of the church together. So I start the, the Zoom meetings. I don't know if you saw that. I'll talk about it now. Zoom yeah. meetings of, yes. And um, so it was like a few people, and it was like for a month or so, and just one, I can remember it was a Wednesday. I was, I need to go live on Facebook. And this where everything started on a live video on Facebook. And now we're doing twice a week, every week. And I'm enjoying it. Great stuff. So um, pull me back again. You uh, got into church. The pastor's wife was speaking to you, gave you a word of knowledge. And where, where did your, where did your, decision for Christ begin or was that you were you already acquainted with the redemption story back then yes that was and I was I went into church and I can remember uh, I was standing like me alone and I was just like Lord here, I, here is Shalmari please take me as I am I want to be your child and I can remember that the uh, song was played in the uh, 
of, uh, I think it's Selah that sings it, the still, I would just want to be still. And um, yes, that's why I gave my heart and work through every problem and uh, all, all the weird, uh, weird things we have in our lives and the bad habits and yeah. so on. So and how long, I just how, connected. How, how long ago was that? How long ago did that, you make that decision? It's about two years ago now. Okay, that's correct. You told me. Okay, so um, when, when I got saved, it was, I think it was 2004. Um, I, I, had a, I had an experience where I've been, go, I've been invited by my aunt and um, just went because someone said I have to go to church. And uh, I, I, have a, I have a very, um, a very, cool story to tell but I don't want to focus on myself I just want to say that as soon as I got saved immediately there was this thing burning inside of me I just wanted to do stuff so I went to my pastor I said so um, this is this is what's going on in my heart what what should I do so I said well the first thing you should do is go to Bible school so I went to Rayma Bible College and uh, while I was in my first or second year I started uh, serving in a church as the youth pastor and uh, I was just so blessed to be exposed to so many media things. We were doing live, we were recording the service. We weren't really going live back then. I don't think that technology existed. But um, we were, uh, you know, taking the cameras, we were shooting it uh, with the cameras and with the purpose of broadcasting it on TV. We were still um, editing the footage on, on a program called Edius. It was very difficult and hard and so many technical difficulties. We were still putting the tapes and dumping it on the machines. And uh, obviously the, the, the kind of uh, distribution of that goes into the, um, the church's bookshop. The audio has to go in there and then we go online, etc. Uh, and um, so that's where I cut my teeth. And I think we were, we were, I wouldn't say we were the only or the first ones, but in our youth ministry, we did our announcements on video. So that was quite fun. And we worked this on desk and stuff. And uh, we were blessed to be used by God. Our whole youth ministry ran the media in the church. So that was very exciting. And so that's kind of where I got started. How long after, um, after you got saved? Did you just recently with the, uh, the pandemic eating us, when did this bug or this desire to start getting the gospel out there and realizing that we have so many media possibilities for us that we can use. And I feel, and I'm presuming this, but I, 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 it's, it's very possible because I went through the same thing that you felt, you know what? I, I have a responsibility to share this message and I don't have any excuses anymore. I can't say I don't have a church. There is no pulpit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm scared to preach in the streets. Those excuses don't exist anymore. We can't do it anymore. Now the world is literally open. And I always tell people, you know what? Do you have some friends on Facebook? Yeah, I do. How many? About 150 or 300 or 800. Well, there's your church. Take, just take your camera on your phone. Go live on Facebook and share your testimony. That's how easy it is. How long, uh, when did this bug start biting you? Uh, I wasn't, um, the day I went to church, I actually didn't want to be saved. I, that wasn't the plan. I'm, I just want to go to church because, you know, if you're in the world, you just want to go every uh, four weeks or six weeks just to say I was at church. And or Easter the, and Christmas. Day, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that day was just meant to be. But uh, a few months after that day, um, I always have that desire to do something. Um, I wanted to go to Bible school, but the time wasn't right for me on that stage. And I just want to preach as far as I go. My dad always told me if I, when, when I stop at home, it's my mouth is just like this. I'm never stop uh, and I'm singing and worshiping and everybody is hearing me. So uh, I had a lot of time on my hands in this lockdown, um, although that I had to work, but yeah. I was uh, like, do um, I'm gonna um, tell you, uh, 
I saw every the the people's negativity on Facebook about this lock uh, exactly. lockdown yeah. thing, and yeah. and days where I just one it was a Friday when I uh, made my first video, and the the um the name of the video was it hurt you a lot, and this where everything started. I was actually so impressed with that video and it wasn't so bad to hear my own voice. So I just had it and the word gave, the, the God gave me word every time to make a new video and the time I want to get everybody together and this is where it started. And now it's like going, 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 you know, like a snowball. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. Um, I had a, a, a webinar this week and I think on Tuesday I did a, like a live coaching with uh, one of the pastors was on the call and I said to him, you know, um, one of the, we need, I believe God wants us to create content, but also consistently like let's say, make, I don't know if you've done that, make an appointment with your audience and with yourself and say, like you're doing with radio and saying on Monday at that time, I'm going to go live and I'm just going to encourage people because right now we have a lot of hopelessness and fear and etc. Et and I think we can be voices where we can say, you know, you shouldn't be afraid and here's why. And you know, there's something to look forward to and this is not the end, etc. cetera. Um, so is that something that happened to you or, um, was there another reason why you started? Because what, what was first? Was it the zoom meetings? I'll talk about that in a moment. Or was it the video that was first? Uh, the video was first and there was a, the video was the spot of everything. So okay. I saw that the word go out, but I need to get people together to, it's easy to know that, uh, your friend that is every Sunday next to you in church, it's going well, but does they have bread in the house? Exactly. You know? um, is they okay? And for me, you can lie over a phone call, but if I see you like this, I know, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, we know, just know each other and know that the, the person is not okay. So then the Zoom starts. Okay. That's amazing. I want to, if, if you don't mind, what I want to do is I'll just play the viewers a clip. Okay. And um, I think it was one of, I think this is one that you're referencing. Uh, what I love is um, you recorded it. I think you pre-recorded it. And then uh, you also put an intro in the front, which I think was very, very, very awesome. And uh, I'm just going to quickly play a clip for those that are listening and watching so they can just see what you did. And then uh, we'll just, go through that. Okay, so as you can see, for those listening by radio, you can't see this, but Hello, a, Yelle, my name is and the, the title of the message basically is there. It says, what is jy van, wat as vandag jy laaste dag is? Okay. And Hello, Yelle, my name is Shalmarie, and I wil graag iets met jylle deel. Ek het myself die vraag so week of wat terug gevra, wat as vandag jou laaste dag is? As vandag jou laaste dag is, wat sê jy anders gedoen het? So jy dook, Voor iemand na aan jou jammer gesê het wat jy dok ongeskik was, sou jy dok meer onverskoening gevra, dok meer vergewe het, dok meer gesê het, ek is lief vir jou. Na elke dag het sy eie hartseer, sy eie strijde, sy eie suksesse, sy eie uitdagings. Maar God sê in sy woord in Jakobus 4 vers 14 en 15, Jylle wat nie eens weet wat moore sal gebeur nie, hoe danig is jylle lewe. Dit is toch maar een damp wat vir een kort tykie verskyn en daarna verdwijn. En plaas dat jylle sê, as die Heere wil en ons lewe, dan sal ons dit of dat doen. Dit gaan nie oor moore nie, dit gaan oor vandag, wat God wil hy ek en jy vandag moet doen. God het ons het die doel is gegee vir vandag. Ons moest ook vir iemand gebid het, ons moest ook vir iemand gesê het, weet jy wat, jy is rechtig, ek reid mens. Ons moest ook vir iemand van God vertel het, ook vir iemand gesê het, God is lief hier. Nou sien, ons allemaal is so bekommerd oor, oor die dag van moore. Wat gaan ek moore doen? Hoe gaan moore wees? Gaan ek moore dit en dat kan doen? Ek maak al hierdie groot beplanning. Maar dan weet ons nie eers of ons moore hier gaan wees nie. En God sê, hy sal ons nooit vir ons krachten versoek nie. Dis wat in die woord van God staan. Hy sal nooit vir my en jou vir ons krachten versoek nie. So maak die sal vir die dag van vandag inhoud nie. 
God sê ons altyd die kracht, hy is altyd daar. Hy het dan 40 jaar lang vir die kinders in, van Israel in die woestijn gesorg. Hulle skoene en hulle kleren het niks oorgekom, het was nie eers veil nie. Ek denk het amazing is dit, dat hy vir my en jou nog steeds sorg, elke lieve dag. Daar is geen perk in sy voorsiening nie. En die lewe is so geneig om my en jou van af te laat dwaal van wat God vir ons wil hee. Ons, ons lewe nie vir die dag van vandag nie. Vir van jouself af as die dokter na jou te kom en vir jou sê, Sjaal Marie, jy het vier maande oor om te lewe. Nou jylle wat kinders en kleinkinders het sal weet dat as iemand vir jou my sê, jy het vier maande oor om tyd som met jou geliefdes te spandeer dan wil ons die bucket list voltooi, dan wil ons dit doen. Hoekom leef ons nie vandag nie? Hoekom doen ons dit nie vandag nie? Hoekom wil ons wacht tot ons tyd min is? Hoekom leef ons nie elke dag nie? Hoekom wil ons wacht voordat ons ons hart en leven vir God gee? Heere, gee my net gauw nog een kans. Ek wil net gauw dit doen. Doen dit vandag. Moer is dalk net te laat. Ek en jy weet nie wanneer Jesus weer op die wolke gaan verskyn nie. Kom ons skarpe deem, grijp die dag. Ons leven vandag nie vir moore of wat moore inhoud nie. So spreke 27 vers 1 sê, beroem jou nie op die dag van moore nie, want jy weet nie wat die dag sal bring nie. Ek en jy weet nie wat die dag van moore gaan bring nie. Kom ons begin leven vir vandag. Ons doen wat God van ons vir vandag wil hee. Wat God op ons die doel is vir vandag gesit het, nie vir moore nie. Ek wil Romeine 8 vers 28 by julle loos. Als werk en goede mee vir die wat my lief het. As jy een pad sal met God stuur, gaan alles vir jou ten goede mee werk. Op sy tyd. Kom ons karpe jy, grijp die dag, lewe vir vandag. Een moore is nie gewaar. Kom ek bid vir jou. Heere, dankie dat dit ons weet, ons aan die beloftes kan vasthou. Heere, dankie dat ons, dat ons weet dat dit jy is hier aan die skorre weer ons rechterkant. Heere, help ons om nie bekommer te wees op die dag van moore, nie help ons om vandag te lewe, Heere, om vandag te doen wat ons moet doen, en vandag jammer te sê, en te sê, ek is lief vir jou as ons dit moet sê. Heere, want moore is dalk net te laat. Heere, dankie vir die liefde en die genore, Heere, en dankie dat, as ons nou ons hart en lewe vir u wil gee, Heere, dat u open arms ons gaan staan, Heere, en ek vraag dat hierdie boodskap op die rechte oore sal val. Sê in elkeen, Heere, en en help hulle om die rechte keeses te maak. Ons eer u daarvoor, in Jesus Christus naam. Amen. Ok, so, kom ons dat, ok, this is kept on playing there. Ok, let's, uh, let's talk about the video, uh, Shalmarie, you say this was your first one. The video, that video, no, that video was like my seventh vid- uh, video. The seventh one. Okay, so, so this this is just one that I caught, and obviously, I I think it is is amazing. Um, I think you're selling yourself short. I think there's a lot of confidence in there, and uh, we'll talk about the delivery in a moment. Was it weird watching yourself now? Very weird. Uh, it's very weird to um, listen to myself and see myself actually busy there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you did uh so there's some elements in there that i want to discuss that i think was also nice what you did you put an intro before with this the title and then encouragement at the end and i can also hear that you put some music in the background that just you know creates a mood etc and we know that uh from from scriptures that music helps us get connected to the heart of god focus on him and uh, encourages worship in a, in a way did you go and edit the video afterwards? Um, how did that work? Yes, um, always um, uh, recording the video like 10 times because it, um, there's always something in the way. The dog is blow, yeah, and then you yeah, motorbike backfiring. And then I take the video, cut it because I need to press the record button. So there's like a... Yeah. A few seconds of me moving around, right. and then I'm editing it and put the intro in, and 
Um, I'm a person that if I'm watching a video, I first want to know what's the video about, mm. you know? So maybe the message is for me today and I just need to hear that what as vandaag your last dag is. Mm. Then I'm gonna watch the video. So yeah, that's why I'm putting the intro in so that everybody that wants to watch the video can see, okay, maybe it's for me. Maybe I need it to hear it today. And the music, um, always I used uh, like normal songs, you know, of Casting Crowns, but Facebook doesn't like it. So they are blocking me out and mute everything. So now I'm using like um, just music with no words. And it's, you know, it's um, calm music. It so works. it makes you calm. Yes. And yes, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Um, do you know that, uh, and I know some people would say, yeah, it's a bit rough, but it's very professionally composed. That do, you, do you actually know how well you've done the composition of this video? Actually, I have a passion for things like that, um, yeah. like photos and videos and you know, everything that's working on technology, you can basically say. But uh, don't give me IT, I'm not an IT guru, but things like that, you know, like advertisements and programs and things, I'm, I'm loving it, it's my passion. And to um, can, uh, like combine the word of God with it and make videos and it's just, just my passion, that's awesome. who I am. Uh, where, where, does this, where does this aptitude come from? Have you always played with this kind of stuff? Uh, have you had any training before, worked in the field? Where did that come from? Um, no. Um, actually, one of my hobbies is to take photos. So um, I always take photos in church because it's the place that you can take the, 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 the amazing photos with that emotion. I love that emotion. I'm always taking photos of people. I'm not um, spread it everywhere, you know. It's just for my eyes, just to have it. And I love to take outside photos and everything with technology, you know, videos and photos. So I'm always playing around and make PowerPoints. Um, I love to work with PowerPoint. So making videos on it and yes, it's. I had it on, um, when I was in school, one of my subjects was like, I don't with the computing, something like that, but okay. I'm not a typer. Computer I'm more like the, yourself. yes, I'm more like the, the video and the photo person. Okay. So obviously, um, you edited all this video and composed a lot of media elements in it. What, what kind of program did you use to, to edit the, pro edit the video? Yeah, <laughs> that's a tricky question. <laughs> um, something video. Uh, it's a. You're gonna ask. Uh, I can't. I okay. can't answer that question. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure of the name. Okay. So did you go and buy software? Were you able to get something that was free? Um, how did How did you get get acquired? Uh, one of my friends is also a pastor, in Nigel. Um, gave it to me i'm asking him does he have because he's always doing also doing videos for his pastor and okay. for the church in nigel so i asked him does he have maybe a program that's working well you know because you can download one on um, the internet but you need to pay a lot of money and true, you don't yeah. know it and he he gave me the um program and okay. um told me i must go and youtube some videos to figure okay. everything out because it nice. was confusing at the beginning so you went and you also taught yourself how to do it and so on yes awesome i see that you say this is your seventh video and i see it's about 600 plus views on it what how many views did you have on your first video over a thousand um on your first video i think video. there's one video yes i think there's one video that i have 1700 but i um i don't um care about the views. I just want to get <laughs> the word of God out. So if there's one person there, maybe go, let's say there's 200 views and there's one person out of that 200 people that gave their heart and want to be saved, then I achieve something. Eh? 
Look, I, I do videos quite often. And if I get 500 videos or, or views on a video, 800, then I'm very happy. I feel as like I eat, eat the jackpot or something. So uh, I just want to, you know, getting a thousand views on your first ever video, that's phenomenal. And I, I believe that the hand of God is on you. I have to say that because if you get that kind of response, then, um, you know, it's just, I, think, I believe it's your time. Would you consider yourself an internet or an online evangelist? Um, yes. Um, in the time that we are now, um, it's not always possible to go out yes. because of all the social distance and all that things. But um, I'm actually trying now to um, use the internet and like Zoom and everything to, um, you know, uh, try to save people and tell them about Jesus. So I'm always trying everywhere that I come. If I'm outside, I'm actually um, like four weeks ago, there was like a person that's always walking around here at work. And she's in a very bad space. You can see she has a, a, a bit of a bad habit. So I stopped her with my mask and everything. And I asked her, can I pray for you? Um, they, the response wasn't so good, but I'm not going to stop. I'm going to see her again. So then I will stop her again and ask, can I pray for her? Till the day I'm going to pray for because my day will come. Um, I know God will work with her. Right. Um, I want to focus for the benefit of my audience because, you know, my, I believe my calling is equipping the body of Christ to sh get their message who it's intended for, building those media channels, etc. So I want to focus some more on the video. Um, I see most of your videos are going to average of 600 to 1,000 plus uh, views. Are you currently implementing any promotional strategies? In other words, sharing it with your friends, sharing the link anywhere, telling people to watch, uh, subscribing to stuff, those kind of things? Uh, or, or was it just organic growth that you're experiencing? Um. I just uh, put it on Facebook and shared it on a few pages like Rainbow Chat was one of it and uh, the Ben Loebshire page. And um, some of the people on my WhatsApp doesn't have Facebook or have da data to watch the video. So I sent it to them. Um, otherwise, um, it's just there. Um, I tag a few people in, you know, like my close friends, my church people, um, my parents in. But um, it's just going. The people are sharing it. Um, that's all I do. Um, I don't have a page or something like that. Um, I'm just Shalmari. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, I've always said that um, your, your Facebook profile, where you have friends, that is already a big um, harvest or a missions field. Um, you mentioned your parents. Uh, you sent it to your parents. What, how is your parents responding to that? Um, my dad always tell me how proud he is um, and that he love, love it that, that his daughter is, um, have, you know, that um, spirit to go out and preach because I'm always preaching for them. Um, they must also li always listen to me and I'm asking them, does it sound okay? And uh, the, most of the times I'm sending them first a video before I place it on the social media platforms. Um, just for an opinion, maybe I said something, you know, um, uh, sometimes there's some words that you need to be more sensitive about because the people out there are sensitive. You can just, you can't come and just boom, um, you must give your life to Jesus. You know, you right. must come with circles. So yes, um, they're always listening, just listening to me. <laughs> okay. Um, you obviously... Right now, by your, I saw in that seventh video, uh, your delivery is quite good. Have you, what have you done to get comfortable with delivering this message? I also see that you, um, you know you're dressed well, you've got a good background, you make sure you've got good lighting. Talk to us a little bit about that. How long did it take you to perfect the, 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 the making of the video itself? The first one um, I made in my room, I have a a, a nice a couch, a small couch. It's like my, you know, when I want to be still um, couch. And it, uh, it was a rainy day that day. So I, I had my hoodie on and I put a light on and I, I didn't edit it the way that I 
edit this one. So every time I try to be better and better, and I ask my, my brother is a, a IT, a IT um, guy, and I ask him that um, does it look fine? Must I do that? So every time I uh, try to use something different, and about by the the third video, I went outside at the backyard. And that's where it happened. Um, I got word one day at work. It was a Friday afternoon. So I uh, went home and I was outside. And I was like so excited. My my brother sent me a message. He told me, you must stand still. Otherwise, you're going to be in the swimming pool uh, by the time you're finished. So um, I love the, 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 the outside um, where the, the birds is chirping and everything. So it's better for me to do it outside. And every time I'm, I'm looking, you know, I see if that the looks is fine, you know, I must be neat and everything. Um, so I, I, I think that's important that you, uh, that you are presentable, but I, I, I feel, I just want to encourage everyone listening. Uh, if you're going to create media, there, there is so many barriers you know, the devil's going to lie to you and he's going to say, you know what, that's not really great. You know, that doesn't look too good. Don't do it. You know, you're going to throw your name away or you're going to embarrass yourself, etc. And those things happen. And so I want to encourage you. Yesterday, we did a video shoot for my platform where I did some content and just sharing tips, etc. And one of the things that keep on coming to me is these barriers that we have as believers we don't want to share now more than ever. We have this amazing opportunity because we have so much attention. We have people that are constantly online. They are, you know, the attention on the Facebook feed, for instance, is, is amplified by 200% because people are at home or they're relaxing. And, you know, that, that whole, it's like the whole world's on pause. We're just, we're just taking it slow. We, we have to. And uh, I think it, it's an amazing opportunity for us to just share a message of hope, a message of reconciliation, um, you know, encouraging people, etc. And um, so some of the barriers are, uh, obviously equipment is a barrier. So let's talk about that. Um, that didn't hinder you to get started. It, um, you just took your phone and went. So a lot of people say, yeah, I don't have a camera and you know, I, don't, I don't have good sound and whatever the case may be. And uh, you were referring to, we were talking about just dressing present, uh, presentably. Uh, and some of the pastors or uh, some of the evangelists or people in offices, they might say, uh, you know, it's a barrier for you if you have to go put on a suit every time to do a video. I believe that when God speaks to you and there's inspiration, you should go and capture what he's given you, you know, go and take a, your phone and just talk. And put it and go live if you if you want to because there's no there's no time like the present and you know if we have to have a message and we first go and plan it and we say okay we need a good location what I'm gonna wear by the time that you do that video the passion's gone and the inspiration is flat so um, obviously you've also done the same you just jumped you used what you had um, you know was that something that was important to you? Um. At first, I, I thought I need a fancy camera or something, you know, to take a video or a video camera. And I just took my phone and put it in selfie mode the first time the, with the first video. And uh, every time I was trying the, the, you know, the front cam camera, the back camera and see which one is the best. So I'm actually just using my, my cell phone because I have it. I don't need to go and take money out and get a fancy camera because have everything so i need it i um, use it you know i saw um i have a collection of joy magazines here in my office and i saw one of the headings it was about a year or two ago it says are you using financial constraints as excuses and so that's what i think is important to tell people is are we going to, I'm, I'm the same. I'm going to be honest with you guys. You know, I've for years, I've like, I don't have a camera and we don't have sound and my editing program doesn't work. And you know, you go and complain about all the things that you can't do. And yesterday I mentioned those videos that I did and uh, I wrote an article 
on this as well. Moses had the same problem. He gave God a thousand excuses why he can't do what God has called him to do. And I believe everyone listening and watching, you've got a message. You've got a testimony. Even if you just share it once, and like you said, Shal, is even if just one person gets touched by that message, we have a responsibility to do it and stop thinking of all the excuses. We have something in our home that I shared with them. And I said, you know what? If we're looking at something that needs to get done, we can go find excuses or we can find a solution. And the best thing is to go and find a solution. And let's look at ways, instead of looking at ways of how it can't work, let's look at ways of how it can work. And what are the options for that? Instead of coming up with excuses all the time. Um, I want to quickly talk about, I want to end off with uh, the, the, the Zoom stuff that you do, but let's in the interim talk about your, uh, your going on radio. Um, you mentioned that, uh, Niku, did he give you a call? How did he hear about you? How did that happen? Um, he phoned me like I didn't have any num his number. So the, the moment I answered the call, I, I know the... the I know his voice, so I was like, Uncle Niku, I, and he's like, do you know me? I'm so, uh, no, it was um, your uh, voice, I know your voice. Yeah. So he asked me, he told me that um, God said to him, he must phone me. And mm. I was thinking and I was looking for opinions with the people that's close to me and, and was praying about it, and I wasn't... Um, right on that stage of my life because um, I needed to grow by myself. So uh, I told him not now and about two months ago, um, we had a conversation again to do a, like a gospel music top 10 show and God told me no. And I was like losing hope, you know, maybe it will happen one day. And just like on the day I, I didn't, um expect think he will phone yeah and he think he will phone me and my boss was just like um you're going on rainbow gospel radio with your own show i thought that uh, i will stand in for the the presenters that are in church because we had a lot of uh presenters in Jesus is light. So I will stand in for them. He told me, no, you have your own show. And I was like, <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And I'm, joy I'm, I'm enjoying every moment to be on radio. I'll do it every day <laughs> if I can. That's amazing. So um, what is your show called? Uh, Heart of Worship. Okay. And what is the concept of the show? Are you playing music? What are you doing on the show itself? Um, if God give me word, um, I share it with the people uh, or a message. Uh, but it's actually that sometimes we just need to worship. We we don't need to say anything. We just uh, need to be still and worship. And I'm actually one of that persons that's always worshiping. If I'm in car, if I'm in the house, I'm always busy singing. Um, I'm not a best singer, but... I'm trying it and I'm just, it's just about, you need to get, you know, put your heart out there and just worship because music, music spoke to, to a person mm. and um, there's always a message in music. So you mentioned that um, you, you were approached a couple of times and you didn't think you, you personally, one of the things, the barriers for you is you didn't think you were ready or you wanted to still grow. What are some of the personal development practices and devotional, devotional disciplines that you apply to pre I've prepared you for this? Um, I needed, uh, at that time, I did a dad cut because... You won't find me um, speaking to people of even doing this. Um, you know, I, I was a very shy. I was always scared of I'm going to say something wrong. And um, I felt, well, um, I felt that um, I didn't know the word of God good at that, on that time. So I was like... Um, get more time to uh, spend in the, the word of God. And I was learning, watching videos of some pastors and 
no, um, work on myself, on my gut, because I need to preach for a lot of people. So it's, you need that gut because I didn't even like my own voice. So now I must listen to my own voice. Awesome. You've also got another platform that you're active on. It's called Zoom Prayer Warriors. Tell me a bit about that. Okay, that was actually just to get the, the people of the church together. So one day I was um, at home in the lockdown. So I phoned one of uh, uh, the, the pastors at the church and I was uh, tell him I, need to, I want to do it. What does he think about it? So he told me it's a great idea. I must do it. And I started it. And on the first night we was like five people because we uh, sent the link out to everyone. Um, so we was like five people and it, we worship and um, pray for people and did a pray, a prayer requests. And the one day um, I was just, I need to go live on Facebook and I never did it before. Um, so I went on Facebook and the result was amazing. And the people was even people that isn't even in my ear area or in my church. It was like a, uh, we had some people overseas from few um, different countries that was um, chatting with us and asked for prayer requests. And um, it just started there. And now we do it twice a week and I'm loving it. It's just, I, you know, I'm getting started a week and now that it's um, almost Zoom time. So we do prayer requests and tell everybody if you need to, uh, we, you need to pray, we dare to pray with you, and that's what we do. Okay, so um, when you did that first call, you said that you had five people on, and a lot, a lot of times, we, you, you mentioned, Ivan, I don't pay attention to numbers, they don't move me, and a, a lot of people do that. They do, and I'll be honest, I'm also discouraged sometimes when I do something, I've put a lot of time and effort into it, I sent emails to everyone, and then you do something and you, there's like, uh, you know, sometimes I'll do a webinar and I'm really pouring out my soul and my everything into it. And there's like three people on, I'm like, what's going on here? So um, do you have advice for people that uh, what we're talking about, they're going to start maybe looking at that and doing it. And like you say, get the guts and just jump off the deep end and go and do a live video, or pre-record something. What is your advice for them not to get discouraged when they don't see the results that they are expecting right away? Okay, um, actually, I was also um, sometimes when you see that you had an amazing uh, message on the Zoom meeting and you see there was like 200 because I can remember the first video was like 170 views. Yeah. And I was like, oh the people is not watching, you know, and then you're losing hope because uh, the people doesn't see your live video and doesn't hear the message, but you need to keep going because every time you do it, the, the views is climbing and, but it's not about the views. It's about the, the, how many persons really take the message and use it. Um, how many persons is uh, without any hope, they're on a very dark place and you, your message come and they, they make that decision to go to God and say, Lord, here I am. So you mustn't, it's, it's, it's not easy, you know. Um, we always want to see that uh, you achieve something. And if you see this, maybe a thousand views, you feel like... Um, I'm charged up now. Yeah, I had a thousand views, but it's not about the views. It's about how many people after that message gave their heart to, to Jesus and, um, and decided to start working, uh, start walking, uh, uh, you know, with God and gave the heart and just give, you know, just uh, start a journey. So it's not, it's not really about the views. We are always worrying about the views, but yeah. Awesome. Um, so what, are you, what did you do? You mentioned at the beginning that you send emails out. How did you get people to know about 
the Zoom uh, Prayer Warriors broadcast, um, keeping in mind that at the beginning there was five, but now there's thousands of views on this, uh, on this specific call. Um, what are you doing in, to grow this broadcast? Uh, we actually sent it, we have a broadcast uh, group on WhatsApp. Okay. All the, all the church people is on. Like there's like 200 and something people. So. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, I've got a broadcast group. That helps. Where did they come from? Did, they, did you build them from contacts that you had? Did you ask them permission? Did they ask you to be added? How did that work? Oh, um, I asked the permission. <laughs> it's, it's actually the church. It's actually the, the church um you okay. know, broadcast where all the things of the church is on. So I sent it, I asked to send it out on that group. And okay. that night was five people. So, but I didn't have the Zoom prayer warrior group on that moment. Okay. So about when I went live, I start the group also. Okay. So besides the broadcast group on WhatsApp that you have, what else do you do to promote your, uh, your Zoom prayer warrior school? Um, I'm actually sharing it on Facebook. That's all I do. Um, I'm every Wednesday, I remind the Wednesday and Saturday, I remind the people about the, uh, the, the meeting the next day and the, send the, the, uh, the people that's um, the group's number is there. So I told them that if you need, um, you know, prayer, if you have any prayer requests, you can send it. And that's what I do. Um, and the, the people that's on, we are like four people now that's in the group of the pre warriors. So I just sent the email out to them, but yeah. otherwise I'm just promoting it on Facebook. Okay. Um, you mentioned that you're doing this twice a week. Um, why are you doing it twice a week? Did you see a need for that? Are you doing it because you feel that's what you have to do? Um, and what days uh, are that? On, Okay. On Thursday nights on seven o'clock, um, we have, it's like, uh, there's always somebody preaching that night. There's always, if God give word to somebody that they are sharing it that night and we pray that on that night. And Sunday we are um, discussing a subject, you know, like baptizing or um, sins or something. So I'm, the most of the time we're asking the people to give us a subject they want to know about more because sometimes they're reading the word of God, but I don't understand it. So we are helping them to, um, with, to answer their questions. So that's on Sunday. That's with, uh, why that's two nights in a week that we do it. That's amazing. Um, I noticed that one of the strategies that you also use just to get the momentum on the call is I think I've seen you do, do it in one of them, is you wait for people to come onto the call before you actually start. Where did you see that? Why, um, how is that working? Um, actually, I um, watch a lot of videos of preachers and so on. And I'm always seeing that they saying that just wait for a few people to come on, then we will start. And then the views is climbing. You can see maybe there's two people. You're waiting. Then it there's two hundred people. Yeah. So there's where I learned it, and now I'm also doing because the people is trying to connect and waiting. And seven o'clock, they say, "Oh, it's seven o'clock. I need to go on." So then they're a bit late. So I'm just waiting to see if the people come on. So how much time do you give that process? Do you wait five minutes? And then if there's nothing there, you carry on, or do you wait for a certain number? Um, wh what, is your, uh, what is your kind of standard before you move on with the call? Actually, um, I'm waiting about five minutes, but I doesn't, um, don't look at the view. So there doesn't need to be like five, 50 people on for me to start. So I'm just giving them like five minutes and five past seven, then I'm starting. If there's no 10, 10 people or 20 people, I'm just that the people will come if they need to be there. And then uh, you mentioned, and I wanted to, I've, I've prepared this question um, on, on some of the latest uh, Zoom Prayer Warrior calls, you've got collaborations with other people, you have them on. I think it's only Henny Grobler, Magda, and Ines, etc. Uh, 
how did those relationships come about? Did they say they want to be part of it? Did you ask them to come on? How did, how did that work? Um, they're actually my friends and my church friends. So I asked them that um, Ian was the guy that um, I asked about the, the, do you think it will be great, you know, a good idea to start the Zoom thing. So I just asked them, do you want to be part of it so that we can chat? a little bit and they was actually the only people that stayed on you know some people come and some people go so um then we started a, a zoom prayer warrior group the one on facebook we also have a private one on whatsapp that we gave all the the prayer requests on you know and uh, together so yes they are the part of the team that that makes zoom prayer warriors it's not just me it's we are a team and it's not me, by the way, it's God. <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, so I would presume um, for them to be with you on the call, it also helps you grow the community that you serve because all of them can also share it with their uh, people on, on, on YouTube and their, their WhatsApp, etc. Once they came on board and collaborate and help you, did you see that community grow? Uh, on the in the beginning, no, but uh, when we start to do the live one, um, they share it. So every time we go live, everybody in the five minutes that we are waiting for the people to come on, we share, um, on everyone is sharing. So basically, we get like four or five shares. So the, my friends see it, uh, Henny's friends see it, Marina's friends see it. So uh, we are, there's a lot of people that see that video on that moment. That's amazing. Um, I want to end off by um, just, if you, let's presume that we speak to 5,000 people right now. And um, I, I've, I've, I've positioned this as, I, I'm, I'm extremely impressed and encouraged by your story. And you just getting this fire and realizing that this is something that has to be done um, you went for it, yeah, yeah, you know, you weren't bashful, you just took a chance, it wasn't perfect, and uh, you know, the results is definitely showing. So if there's someone that uh, wants to get started, and you know, maybe feels there's a call of God on their life to, uh, you know, not all of us can preach in the pulpit, it's never going to happen, but we can take that responsibility of that Great Commission and say, you know what, the, the scriptures say we must go out in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And this is such a powerful way to do that. If someone wanted to do that before, they hear the call of God perhaps right now, what would you tell them and encourage them with uh, if you had the opportunity to speak to them? Okay. Um, I would say that uh, when you have an idea to do something or you have a of you, if you feel it's on your heart, there will always be people that will tell you it's not going to work. There was people that told me the Zoom thing is not going to work. And that was like the pet petrol on my fire. You know, I want to prove them wrong and told them, you see now, like I told you so. But there's always going to be people that don't want you to be a step ahead of them. So when, it, you, when you feel it in your heart, go to God, close the door and ask God to show you if you need to do it. Um, he must give you a sign and he will, if it's from him, he will give it to you. And you have, if you have a calm feeling in you, like I was so calm, I wasn't stressed up or nervous or everything, anything. So when you're feeling calm, you know, that's the right decision decision but when you're feeling like everything inside is like a roller coaster then go to god and he will guide you and don't let anybody stop you if you if it's in your heart and you feel you have the desire that that bubbling feeling to do it do it because we need people to to preach the gospel we need people to don't be scared because everybody is scared but what's the people gonna see say it's be a warrior don't don't give up um the enemy wants wants to um put you down but you just need to keep going 
So you mentioned there's um, sometimes you have this feeling of peace and you think this is the right thing. And uh, in other cases, and probably also just before you go and do it, you have this extreme butterflies in your stomach. And uh, I always say that that's probably a sign that what you're doing right now is, a, is the right thing or a good thing. So would you agree with that? Yes, I would. If you're excited about it and you feel you won't want to put everything in it, then I think it's the right thing. Awesome. And then uh, can you share with us some tips on uh, you're about to do something, maybe you go live on Facebook or you do a Zoom call or whatever. What are some of the preparations, both spiritual and technical, that you need to do to make sure that you're, su you're successful? Okay, the thing that I'm always doing before I go on a social media platform or radio is praying. Um, I'm talk to God and ask Him to, to um, be with me and give me the word that I'm not um, talking as Shalmari, but that he put the words in my mouth. And um, you just need good internet, that first thing. Um, we're always struggling with that thing. But um, yes, and good uh, a good quality camera, you know, don't want to be... And you need to be close up, you know. You can't sit here and um, one meter away is the camera. So... And I think you need a good a microphone that people need to hear you and you must be loud and clear. <laughs> okay, so that, just talk to me about the mic quickly. Um, what are you using? Where did you get it? And how much did it cost? Um, uh, for this now or for the radio? <laughs> no, when you're ra ra radio or when you're broadcasting on oh. Zoom, obviously all your things that you do, you should have decent sound. Um, when I'm on Zoom, um, I'm using my normal, you can see my phone, microphone, okay. ear, um, earphones. So it's a Samsung earphones. Okay. And when I'm going on the radio, I have a, a, um, a headset that I bought on Take A Lot. It was 500 Rand that have the mic, you know, here. Yeah. And the things, yes. So that's what I'm using to go on radio and just a normal thing. I never tried it um, without the earphones. Um, I don't like the, the noises around me. So I'm always doing it like this way. Okay. And then what is, your, what is your plans going forward? Are you going to soon expand to, to YouTube? <laughs> Are you going to go on Instagram? Do you have any plans? Um, actually, my videos is on Instagram, on my, okay. my private um, profile. Um, yeah. So I'm always, always, um, always posting it on there also. Um, I will go the way God wants me to go. Um, I want, just want to um, go out and tell people about Jesus. And I know that God will lead me where I must go. Um, I will love it to preach it um, in a church or something, but that will come. I'm still... Um, going that way so yes um i will want to go that the way god wants me to go no i don't have plans on my own no but i know god will lead me the way where i needed to be planned okay my final question then is let's say whatever you're doing you're doing zoom you're doing a video on facebook live maybe or or you're editing that or you're going on radio in any of those cases um, how far ahead do you prepare for your show or uh, do you wait for inspiration? I'm, honestly, I'm like that. I'm like uh, half an hour, 10 minutes before. I'm like, yesterday I was shooting videos and I was standing in front of the camera and the guy's been set up and the lights, everything. And they say, okay, let's start. I said, I don't have it yet. And I'm just waiting. <laughs> and then, okay, let's talk about this. So what is your process like? Do you have something that you uh, used to prepare? Um, I'm always asking God for word if I need to um, bring word, but uh, most of the times he's giving me a word like um, baptized, um, then I'm waiting for inspiration. And most of the times it's always just before the time I need to go on, like yeah. 15 minutes before, then I'm in the Bible, want verses and write everything down. Otherwise, I'm just talking. Um, I'm not writing it down. I'm just, it just come. 
Awesome. Shell, thank you so much for joining me. I know that you were scared. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, and then uh, I'm, uh, you know, was, yes, go ahead. Uh, it was very nice. Thank you for the opportunity. It wasn't that bad. Hey? Yeah, no, it wasn't bad at all. And uh, I'm, I'm, you're definitely, I would say uh, if we had, I, I want to get my platform there where I say, you know what? This is a person to watch. Let's see what they're doing. You're definitely on my list. And I'm very excited for what you're doing and looking forward to what you're going to do uh, in the kingdom and in media. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.